All right, so um, yeah. can I go straight to team news if that's all right? Mm-hmm. Um, no Jack Stevens again, obviously. Um, you've got players who can't get in the squad. Is anybody else unavailable this weekend? Um, no, I don't think so. I think everyone's come through uh, unscathed from midweek. So, yeah, there'll be a, a couple of guys playing in the 21s tomorrow night because it's here and we have a chance to watch them and, and control um, that environment as much as we possibly can. So the few guys that have been left out of the squad recently. Um, and then, yeah, we will pick the best team and the best squad that we feel we have available for this game. Um, not much, really. Like honestly, I, the we have. Um, I really love the environment we have and and the culture that the guys have uh, together of work and and um, the way they treat each other and treat the staff. And so maybe it's made a few players feel a bit lighter or externally people feel a bit better. But um, we're really uh, process driven, so it's the same as anything. So we we got through the game. I was really happy of a lot of the performance, a lot of the individual performances as well. But we've analysed it, we've looked at it, we've tried to learn from it again going into the weekend. It was a big progression from uh, the Manchester United game in terms of response to disappointment in the game and um, the mentality throughout the game. I really enjoyed that. So it's given us loads of food for thought in terms of team selection. Um, and I think it's put some a few of the players in a, in a much better place than they were in individually, probably. But as a group, as a collective, the feeling's always been good. I mean that, like even after four um, defeats, um, they've trained so hard we try and follow the same process consistently try and treat, treat each, other in, each other in the same way but we'll also whilst feeling the results and feeling disappointed and feeling frustrated and feeling angry and um, about certain bits but we can only try and get better and be better at what we do and I feel like that has to be the message all season we will keep trying to be better um, and on Wednesday, Tuesday night we were better and now we have to be better again on Saturday And after that game where you said I think you more convinced than you've ever been that you're going to be absolutely fine this season and things are going to turn the corner. Is that the hardest bit for you, getting that mindset message across, maybe even to those outside your playing group and your staff here? Well, like uh, I think everyone in the building really believes in what they're doing. I think um, everyone's built up a little bit of, uh, probably been guilty of overthinking and um, building up the Premier League to an extent where it's probably affected things a little bit. And we've tried to be really consistent with that and not do that. But of course, it's only natural, right? People going in it for the first time. Some guys being hurt by it the last time they're in it. Um, also, the the whole the whole place how it, how it was affected last time in the Premier League. So um, maybe it's been a bit of trepidation that's led to a few things that probably wouldn't happen if the guys were really in flow. But I think with any team that we've had over the five seasons we've been a management group is the team gets better and better, and they learn very quickly and they learn a lot. And the young players and the new players. Once they really integrate and understand what they are required to do, the team finds a rhythm and a flow. And we have to do it very, very quickly because because probably, really, the only difference is the external noise and the scrutiny and everything else in the Premier League, which changes people's perception and feelings sometimes. But not ours. We'll continue to keep doing what we're doing. And as I said, keep getting better. And I feel like we are. And for half an hour on Man- against Manchester United, the guys really showed that. And then we make 10 changes and the team looks so similar in the way it plays which I'm so pleased about um, and now we have to do the same again on, on Saturday I know different opposition and different opposition again this weekend but what does making 10 changes and seeing the game exactly how you wanted to see it what does that do to your selection mind this weekend uh, well it gives us a lot of problems which is great I think um, I said to the guys before the game like in in, in difficult moments there always lies opportunity for things and people and uh, for you know, being open to people surprising you or, or maybe showing you really what they can do when you know it's there at some point. Um, it's just not quite been happening for whatever reason. So um, I think we had our best moments off the back of tough moments last season. And like when I look back on my career, like every good moment I had was always like um, proceeded with a, a tough one. And then you learn through that and you grow through that and you improve and you get better. And um, I think we'll have to be the same in the same way we were last season. So everyone's feeling really frustrated at the results, but everyone feeling really pleased about so many aspects of the performance. Um, and Tuesday night, we ended up winning the game as well, which was the most important bit. Um, but the performance was was really, really good. So we have to maintain that performance level and now start um, doing what is the most important thing and winning. And how big an opportunity or significant an opportunity does this weekend present you with? I think it's a big game. I think every game in the Premier League is huge. Um, they're going to be a tough opposition, as we found out last year. They've really improved the, in terms of what they've recruited and um, they have a really excellent manager and they're, they're really good at what they do. And it's going to be really interesting to see 
come up against them again this season in the Premier League and, and see what changes them. Well, I feel like we are we're on our, our own journey. They're on theirs, um, and I think it's a really exciting match. They seem from the outside to start pretty cautiously at Brighton. They, they got a nil nil. Are you expecting them to come in a similar way to you? I think you can only ever make the best uh, educated guess from analysing the last few games, analysing last season's matches, what went well for them against us, what went well for us against them, um, and and understanding their their coaching team are meticulous in their approach and, and the way they can adapt to certain um, opposition, but also maintaining what they want to be. So I think it'd be really interesting. Uh, us against uh, them is very different to Brighton against them after Brighton's start to the season as well and the, and the players they have and all that stuff. So you take as much as you can from the previous game, the previous few games, and then, like I said, you make the best educated guess you possibly can to see what they're going to come with. And uh, we'll try and do that and hopefully we get it as right as we possibly can for the players. As a former Norwich captain, obviously you've got a lot of history with Ipswich, but are you a manager who hangs on to those isolated moments? For example, the late heartbreak up there in, in April. Is that one where you think, right, we've got to make up for that or is that just long gone? Um, no, it really hurt. And I think... Um, Use anything in in uh, like part of our job is to is to be like storytellers with the players and to build and to you know they are the main characters in it in the story. So um, last season we used that as fuel a lot because it really hurt the manner of the defeat and um, yeah it was a, it was a real blow to us at the time after one of our best performances um, of of the season actually at times it was an incredible performance and then we end up on the on the losing team which really really hurt and we used that. Um, we have a lot of different players now, um, and I think this this season is a different story. But maybe a few players we can tap into that and, and make them understand, you know, feel that again. And if we can use that, then of, of course we will. But I think with the players we have, and uh, as I said, a lot of new players, we've got young players, not necessarily not necessarily that that important. I think they understand what's at stake. They understand the t uh, season, this tough start to the season we're having, and they're desperate to put it right. So. We'll see if we need it, and we'll see if we, um, yeah, if we need to put it out at any point. Just finally, for me, obviously, championship teams recently have no, nothing new to play in midweek, Saturday, midweek, Saturday. You've had a couple of away trips in midweek now. Are your science numbers guys telling you anything about the players' readiness, given that you now have Premier League games at the weekends instead of championship? Yeah, games? no, it's no coincidence to me that uh, we had a brilliant performance and we run the most we run all season on Tuesday. So um, I think uh, that has to be the 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 backbone of any performance, no matter how you play, is how hard you want to work. The reaction to losing the ball on Tuesday night was really brilliant. Um, the reaction to the mistakes was really brilliant. Next action was positive intention. Um, but no, physically, they're all in a really good place. We have a brilliant sports science and medical team, brilliant facilities, and um, that hasn't come into the thinking in terms of team selection, about freshness and all that. It's about the best team on Saturday because they're all in a place where they can. we're pretty sure they're physically good enough to go and perform the way you want them to. Russell, you, you and Kieran McKenna have had two massive summits. You know, you either get relegated, start again like you did, get promoted, need more players. You've both done it again this summer. You've both promoted to the Premier League. It's the toughest league in the world. And then you're expected to hit the ground running when you go through so many changes of personnel and moods and situations you walk into. When, you, when do you feel it's, it's only sort of like settles down for you all? Because the international breaks are a nightmare. I, I feel because you yeah. just get a bit of flow maybe and then you, everyone goes again three times mm. so I always think you don't really know what a team's like until November, December is that fair or not? Or is yeah, I'd yeah no I'd probably agree yeah, like um, you just can't find any real rhythm with the international breaks how they are but it is what it is and you have to try and deal and adapt with that and we have a lot of players that go away um, so I think uh, I'm, I'm convinced we will get better and keep improving and the more time the players have on the pitch together, on the training pitch, the better they'll become. Because that's the evidence we have after five years of being a management team as well. So, um, yeah, I think it was the case last season, which was a bigger change. We were trying to implement something totally different to the players. And now a lot of them understand it, but then we still have a lot of new guys that have come in. And then also us adapting to the Premier League and certain bits that... Um, I think that's been really interesting for us to learn like certain bits that really were effective in the Championship, maybe less so in the Premier League against certain opposition. So stuff we have to tweak and adapt. So we're finding our rhythm as well as the players. Um, and I'm loving that part of the process. And I think the players are enjoying um, enjoying like playing around with stuff on the training pitch and working stuff out for themselves as well. So they're a big part of that. So I think um, 
we will keep learning, we will keep adapting, we will keep, but we'll, but whilst remaining us. Um, and I said that to the players on Tuesday, I was really grateful for that performance and really proud of them. And also like the resilience they showed with the penalties and conceding the goal and coming back from that. And that was the most uh, pleasing thing. So, um, yeah, as long as you stay together and you stay brave, the rest will come because we have a really um, enjoyable and and thorough process, I think, with the players. And um, we just have to continue on that path. And there's, a, there's, a, there's a good chance, isn't there, that the reaction you got Tuesday is because you were bold enough to make the changes you made Saturday before to bring some younger players in. It would have made some players sit up and take notice. So maybe that's part of that as well. Maybe that that's good for the squad, despite it being too big sometimes in your head. It, it was good for you to be able to do that. Yeah, I think they understand that um, there's real competition now and no one can feel comfortable, myself included, for any for any period of time at all. Um, but being comfortable, being uncomfortable, I think, and the players really pushing each other. And, and honestly, the hardest bit is leaving um, so many of them out of the matchday squad at the moment. It's, it's so tough to do that. And so many of the players that have done so well for us um, last season and were so important and now not even on the, in the squad or on the bench. And uh, it's not easy. But they have to just keep working and, and the, every, everyone is going to be needed. <laughs> it's going to be... Um, there are going to be some tough moments, there are going to be some brilliant ones and they'll all be part of it and they'll all have to feel it, um, whether they're in the squad or they're out, whether they're starting, whether they're not. Um, so yeah, I think the competition actually, and you can feel it in training as well, is a real nice, healthy edge to that, and there needs to be, and they're, they're, people have to be ready. Does that mean there's sort of no best 11? We always want to traditionally say you get the best 11, but different games maybe demand different things in the modern game more. Is it, does it make it that that's less of an issue, or do you need to find partnerships on the pitch that you want to see week in, week out? Well, I think it's a balance, so there'll be different shapes for different opposition, there'll be different... Um, different players that suit different opposition. But I think then that so much of what we do is built on relationships and understanding of what the next player needs on the pitch, what your mate next to you needs, of sacrificing yourself for your mates, pass on time. And uh, like last year, really, we, we found a really settled side um, and people built relationships over a period of time, which really, really helped us. So having that in mind, but also balancing it with we need some... Um, we need some different things for different games. but So that's why we try and play them together in training as much as possible. We look at different relationships and, and people with different um, attributes to help someone else next to them because the way we play, is, like I said, is very much based on feeling and relationships with each other. Um, so, yeah, it is a balance and we have to try and get that as right as we possibly can. And just finally for me, the other relationships that's important to you is your relationship with your players and you obviously have to deal with players in different ways depending on their personalities, but... How did you do? Or how has it been with Cameron to pick him up after the penalty miss last weekend, and sort of either give him that reassurance or make him, uh, you know, not feel like the, the baddie in the, in the mm. piece from last Saturday? Yeah, I don't think um, so. Like the players, they really care. We have a group of players that really, really care. Cam's come in. He's such a good young man, um, brilliant young man, brilliant to work with. Wants to get better. He's missed a penalty and he, he has to, um, he's a striker, he's going to play in a position where he missed chances, maybe some in big games at points in his career. Um, but you have to, your response to disappointment is the most important thing. And I don't think as a group we responded anywhere near well enough on, on Saturday. Um, so that's big learning for us. And actually Cam's trained brilliantly. We've, we've looked at his clips. We've had a couple of really good discussions about it. I think that between the time of the penalty that was given and then it was actually t took, I think um, that took over a little bit. And uh, a bit of tension crept in, but I think it's brilliant learning for him. And uh, we, we have a really top young talent in our hands and it's up to us to manage him. And I, I've got no doubt if he plays on Saturday um, for however many minutes that he will, he will bounce back and it'll be, it'll be brilliant for us. Alfie for 10.30. <coughs> so you talk about relationships there. Do you think that's one of the big reasons why throughout your managerial career your teams have almost always got better as the season's gone on? Yeah, I think, um, well, they build up some evidence of, that they can then trust the work and trust the detail and uh, then they understand more and more what each other need on the pitch and, and certain players because, like, we have... We have guys, there's, we have wingers in the building, but then we have strikers that like to play as wingers as well and um, stuff like that. And then we have some real out-and-out -out number sixes, but some number eights alongside them that can do a bit of both. So, um, And I think like through the spine of a team, you want a really strong core that are pretty much you know are going to play most of the games. And around that, you want to be able to sort of 
adapt and adjust at different opposition, but without losing what you want. So then if you know that two players play really well together in a certain way and it works and you can see it on the training pitch, then yeah, it's really important. But I think it is, it's about feeling and it's about, um, it's about trusting each other and, and understanding you, you know exactly what you're going to get from your mate every single game. And uh, we have to find the, the right balance. But I do think it's a huge part of the, the reason we improve every season and I've and always finished the season better than we have done started it is because the work and the process, but the feeling around that and the consistency in that and hopefully the level of support we give them and hopefully the level of courage we pass on to them to keep doing what we're doing and reinforce the, the good stuff and to not not come off that and um yeah I think I'm 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 so excited about what this this group is capable of. I really really am and I look at some of the young players we have who are going to grow and get better and better and um yes yeah, there's incredibly high ceiling for so many of them and we have to we have to grow together it's the first match between two pro teams this year so you spoke about Kieran McKenna and the battles you had last season does that add a, any dynamic to this match for you uh, I think it's like they've got so many new players we've got a fair few ourselves um Obviously, both me and Kieran have a real way of um, our own ways of seeing the game, and uh, I'm sure he won't want to veer too far away from his, and, and I don't from mine. But obviously, both having to adapt and, and, and learn in the Premier League very quickly. Um, so, does last season come into it? As I said, well, we've looked at the games we played against them, we've looked at their approach to the game so far this season, and then you're having a, yeah, come up with the best game plan you possibly can. And um, I'm really excited about the game at home. Need to bring the energy we started the game with at the weekend and, and continue that and um, try and uh, yeah play in the way that we want to and, and create a real energy and atmosphere in the stadium as we did. Um, and if we have a setback, like we did on Saturday, respond to it in a much better way than we did on Saturday and I've got no doubt the players will now. So ideally we don't have any setbacks, but if we do, we respond properly and we stick to the plan and uh, yeah, it'll be, um, I think it's going to be a really interesting game. Being a pro team, do you expect that to bring a different level of expectation from the fans than maybe they had in the first four matches? Um, I don't know. I got, like, I think the fans have been uh, the fans have been brilliant. So the ones that travelled on Tuesday night to Everton in the cup, uh, Matt after the Man United game, the majority stayed and clapped the team off, and we're going to need that. Like the players need that. The relationship between them and the players last season was incredible, and uh, the way that grew, and it seems to have. Um, it seems to have stayed on, on course despite a tough start and we are going to need everyone. I don't, I don't think anyone thought this season was going to be easy and there was going to be a few tough moments and we should have more points than we have. It's really that simple and I think a lot of people who have been to the games would probably understand that um, and they're seeing a team that's given everything they've got which should be the the thing they're really judged on all the time. The rest is me. I'm asking them to play in certain ways but for the players, yeah, they need... They need the supporters and the supporters need the players to give them everything and, and I think they're given that so far. I feel like we just all need that first win to, to so everyone can relax and actually enjoy themselves a bit and I wanna I wanna put a performance in that the players enjoy being part of, I enjoy watching, the fans enjoy, um and we have a we have an afternoon to enjoy and that's that's really, really important. Just a couple of quick ones if we can. Let's we'll still recover from that time hamstring. Not quite, no. So he'll be another week or so, Will, and hopefully he'll be in contention next week, but I'll keep you posted on that, but not quite yet. Uh, he's not yet back training with the group so hopefully in the next week or so back training with the group but in like being moderated and, and being looked after a little bit so he's still a way off getting fully fit and playing and uh, helping us on the pitch at the minute Just very finally there's been uh, away from the club three or lone players have seen managerial changes mm -hmm. already this season Don Ballard Nico Lawrence and even Sam Dozy mm -hmm. um, I suppose is that a problem for them and, and how do you sort of manage that? Um, well I think it's part of their development I think it's brilliant learning for them they've all gone in and uh with someone and then it's changed and they're going to have to adapt and, and learn another way so I think it's part of the it's part of the risk of sending them out on loan but it's also part of the beauty of sending them out on loan is that they have to adapt to different environments different circumstances and then we'll reassess in January but I, I really believe that Nico's obviously injured as well so that's been difficult for him um, so he's had to deal with an injury going into a new group now we're having to deal with a managerial change as well um, I think is brilliant for them long term so, and I think uh, we, we have a few guys doing really, really well and I'm really pleased with them and they're in and out of the building. Most of them have been back at some point to catch up Riley Lancashire and, and, and us and uh, it's been good to see them and find out where they're at. Um, but I think it's great for their long-term long -term learning and, and progress and uh, yeah, it's just a shame obviously, it's, but it's the nature of the job, isn't it? And um, 
really sorry to see any manager lose their job or managers move on when they've got our players but it's football and um, the guys will have to find a way to adapt and they've got a brilliant support group here in the in the player care team and, and with the, um, the the staff that are literally set up just for them guys for the loans and to make sure they're still part of this club and they're being monitored so um, yeah I don't think we could support them in, in any better than we do. Some of the senior lads being involved with the 21s tomorrow. How how good is it that you've kind of got that relationship with the 21s that they can then go down there and get some minutes and they kind of know the players a lot because they train with them a lot? Yeah, I think we have to. They train with us all the time. Um, I think uh, Rusky is obviously, um, he had an existing relationship with Gilly and and I'm getting to to know him as well. And uh, I know a lot of people, we have a lot of mutual acquaintances and um, he's a really, really good coach. And they're in the office next to us, their staff. they're on the pitch next to us in training every day. So, and, and as I said, they come over a lot and train with us a lot. So they all know each other. And the lads who we asked to play, they've you know they've been brilliant with it. They want some minutes on the pitch as well. It's a good chance for them to go and show what they can do. It's an opportunity. And um, I'm looking forward to watching it. We saw Joe Brown with much warming up, but obviously wasn't part of the squad. Is he kind of the next one off the block for the 21s? Um, I think there's a lot of really promising players. Really promising. We happened to choose Joe that night because we weren't sure on the fitness of one of our players. And um, unfortunately for him, he wasn't involved. But just for him to be around the team again, for where he's come from, um, we had a lot of loan opportunities for Joe, but he was injured last year. So we felt it was best for him to stay in the building and, and develop with us and train with us a lot, which he has. And he's been really, really impressive. So he's one of a long list of players in the academy right now that will have a huge potential. Um, and we just have to make sure we have a really clear pathway for him and a clear plan. Um, and at the minute, this minute in time, it involves him being in around the first team and training and playing really, really well for the for the 21s. Yeah, I've got a new contract. I was done a little while ago, but how good is it to get that super early in the in the, sun, in the season and then you can just kind of... Yeah, I think it's massive for the club. I really do. I think um, Yanni's growing into the season nicely. He's he's getting better and better. And um, yeah, I think he's, uh, he's an outstanding person. He's grown so much in the last year into a leader and... Such a big uh, character for us, with the responsibility he takes on the pitch and off it, and the way he trains. Like he's an, he's an amazing professional, um, and it's been a real privilege and a pleasure to watch him uh, evolve over the last year on the pitch and off it, because he does some amazing things. And um, yeah, I don't think we should take him for granted. I think he's a top player. I really do. And with a year left, it'd been easy for him to to say, "I want to see that out," which has been other people's prerogative um, in the last year and this season still. Um, but he was like, no, he loves it here. He loves being a big part of it. He's really important to us. I think he likes working with us and has a lot of trust and belief um, and in the same way that we do with him. So I think it's, uh, yeah, it's a brilliant, well, it's a brilliant um, statement of intent again from the ownership group and Phil and, and to back us on that and, and giving Yanni a new contract and brilliant for us in terms of Yanni wanted to be here and stay here as well because I think he would have, he would have had a lot of offers to play elsewhere if he'd have seen his contract out. Has there been any development with Carl? Can you tell us why? Yeah, no, he's not. He won't sign a new contract. So right now, um, so I don't know if that changes at any point. But um, yeah, it's just a, a situation we have to be conscious of and aware of. And um, but if it's not going to change, he just needs to give us everything on the pitch. And in the same way Stewie and Shay did last year, and and then I'm sure it will work out for everyone. Saw them to leave last summer. They were like really important players in the season. Mm. Does it kind of maybe get to a point if it's not going to change that you kind of have to cash in from a business perspective? I don't know. That will be the the owners' call in January. It depends how much he would have played by then, what his level of performance is, how he's feeling, how we're feeling. Um, so I think it depends on so much. I can't give you like a definitive answer on that. And it also it depends on you know what who comes in for him and what clubs value him at because no one has in the last three transfer windows. Um, so. Yeah, he's been here. He's been brilliant for us. Um, he continues to put in a good level of performance. And as I said, whilst that happens, then it's just not a problem at all.